Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020. If you have made note of my taste in airplanes, you will probably have guessed that I would buy the GB that is currently available on the marketplace just released today. And indeed I have, because it is a crazy plane and I like crazy designs for planes. I am interested in aircraft designs. I'm not really an airline pilot or a general aviation pilot. I like weird planes and trying them out. I, I'm more of an aircraft designer, so I like to uh, try out the weird planes. And this is certainly one of those. It is basically a plane built around an engine more or less like the way the A-10 is built around its gun. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous in every respect and hopefully should be fun to fly. We'll try it out. I've already tried it out just to make sure I could take off from it and I knew the correct strategy for doing that because it is a tail dragger with a very powerful engine in front. And so, yeah, it's a good idea to get a handle on that. There are two variants. There is the GBR2 and GBZ. There is also an R1 variant. And in fact, that is the craziest variant. I'm not surprised they didn't give us the craziest variant. So these two have uh, Wasp Junior engines. They're 535 horsepower. The R1, which was famous, it was flown by uh, Jimmy Doolittle in one of the air races. I forget, the Thompson Air Race? But it had an 800 horsepower engine, so it was really ridiculous. It got about 30 knots faster than uh, these will. But these are pretty fast. Their cruise speed is definitely not 130 knots. Uh, I don't know why when they put the cruise speed on here, it's never correct. Uh, well, I mean, sometimes I guess with the a Icon A5, it's not too far off. But in this case, it is very far off. Its cruise speed is more like 200 knots. And it tops out at about 230-ish max speed. So that's a bit off. The other numbers are probably right. I don't think it had a pressurized cabin or anything. So, yeah. Um, liveries wise, they, they're just the uh, Aviator Club liveries and then the basic one. Hopefully other people will create liveries. Maybe somebody will cook up a R1 variant for this, which would be interesting. It'll be interesting. Uh, but yeah, we have the Model Z in black and yellow. I'll try the R2 and we will top it off to see how hard it is to get it off the ground. It says CG uh, out of limit. I'll leave it as is and we'll see how it works, okay? So since this is the default setting, I'm not going to touch it uh, at this point. Later on, I might tweak it if I feel like it's necessary. So we're, uh, we're taking off from Burbank. I felt that this was appropriate. I'm a fan of the movie The Rocketeer. That's another reason I would definitely get the GB. And so, yeah, I think it was, it was set around uh, Los Angeles, and I think this is a good place to take off from. Okay, double checking my mass, and yes, it is fully loaded. All right, so in my tests, I found out that there are basically two types of tail dragger. One where you have to move the throttle smoothly, and then the ones where you should just max it out immediately. And this is the latter type, as far as I can tell. So it breaks off. Oop. And don't let it leave yet. Ah, okay. So it can do that. Uh, that, that. That's happened before. Okay, let us try this again. It is pretty violent. Okay, yeah, this is more like the way I had before, and it takes off. It shudders a bit as you lift off. But it's fine. It's fine. There we go. So that's about how it was. I'll have to try and refine that a little bit. But we'll uh, throttle back to the more normal manifold pressure range and more normal RPM. So 2,000 RPM and 30 on the manifold pressure. Those are over here, and we will see at those levels what speed we hit, keeping it to a lower altitude here. We'll head towards uh, LA though. So taking a look inside the cockpit, you can see the GB pedals, experimental, very experimental. 
very shiny wood. The ridiculous wing in front. Oh, and if you're not uh, clear on why this is a ridiculous plane because of the, the thumbnail not really giving all the details in all of its glory, this is how it looks. Yep, it really is just sort of meant to contain that engine and do very little else. So in Sim Update 9 they apparently updated the text-to-speech thing and also some effects on the F-18 so that has happened and I think a lot of people have been flying around the, in the F-18 I haven't tried that out since the update though the airspeed is in miles per hour And as you can see, we're already uh, past 200, well, uh, yeah, right there, 200 knots. Well, let's head over to the city. It'd be nice if we could that air race in this. In air race mode, that'd be fun. So this is an add-on by Carinado, uh, as far as I can tell from what the in-game menu said. And not really their normal sort of deal, but very nice. It is $15 in the in-game marketplace. So basically, even without pushing the engine as hard as it can be pushed, we can get basically to that yellow area, I think, or close to it, on the airspeed dial. We're at 240 miles per hour right now. I feel like the photogrammetry isn't doing a particularly good job today. Super sunny. We're going down here. I have not attempted to land it yet. We'll have the joy of watching me try that together. So this was uh, takeoff with a full fuel tank and we still have that full fuel tank so it's gonna be especially hard landing with that tank. So maybe about 240 miles an hour when it's level and everything. And then if we push everything uh, let's say to the red line I can't get the manifold pressure any higher than that, so 33-ish. We can push the RPM past the red line though. It's only 2300 RPM on that. Lots of wind noise in here, as you might expect, considering the way it is. It's fine to control, though. Not the most nimble thing, but probably nimble enough for racing. Actually, I sort of like... Oh! We went over speed. Yeah, uh, it's, it's fairly stiff. So I like that. We'll try. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if I can take off in it again, right? So let's see. How well can I... I need to be able to take off with it consistently. It was sort of wiggly last time. We'll see how it goes this time. Okay, here we go again. actually try and take off at around 120 miles an hour and the shuttering is off the ground don't know why it does that I guess because of the wheels rotating they're pretty big wheels okay and then throw that well 
Well, I'm just gonna head over to LAX and try and land over there. So yeah, I uh, can sort of take off well enough. Landing might be more interesting though. It's got an interesting amount of range, to be honest. Uh, now, 780 nautical miles, if it can really do that, that's a fair amount of range for a plane like this. That might be just enough to uh, do an around the world flight. There are certain critical legs that you need to be able to do a certain distance if you want to try an around the world flight, and it might just be enough range. Loud though. But yeah, it's got a decent amount of heft to it. I like it. Again, it's sort of my sort of plane anyway. Alright. Nice little flyby. As far as aerobatics are concerned, I, I'm not feeling like this is the best plane to do those in. I should have taken out the Z version for this second try. But we'll give that a go quickly. Well, let's get in right behind the airliner, shall we? That guy seems to... well, I don't know. Let's see. Does this even have flaps or anything? Uh, not as such. <laughs> Wouldn't have expected it anyway. Oh, we get a lot of shaking at this altitude. Sort of regardless. Huh, interesting. Oh, that guy aborted. Alright. the runway. Uh... Or... Well, I can't see a darn thing. I think I'm sort of on the runway. Am I? <laughs> I see stripes on both sides. That's a good sign, right? Uh, whoa! Whoa, no! Don't go that way! Don't go that way! No! Eek! Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, oh, oh, guy. Yeah, I'm really small. The runway's really big. I was probably on the runway, but it was hard to determine that. Okay. Well, I didn't die. Oh, it's got a little. No, oh, I've stopped. All right. Uh, let's try the other one and see what the differences are. I mean, I believe the engine is the same. We'll also try taking off with maybe half fuel load. Oh wow, that's uh... That's a different panel. I... really don't like that panel aesthetically. I... I like the exterior, I like the Bumblebee sort of black and yellow. Stringfield Air Racing Association, but man, that panel is gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> okay, uh, that was very different interior. Uh, the gauges, I mean, they are different. And actually, the speedometer is in knots, so that's good. Alright, here we go. 
Manifold pressure goes up to 35. Okay, actually it's tamer than the other one. Definitely tamer than the other one. I don't know, it doesn't have red zones on the manifold pressure or RPM. So I'll just take it back to the same level since it is the same engine, I think. It might be a somewhat different variant of the engine. Oh, and I guess maybe it was easier to handle. Wow, we're close. Uh, easier to handle because we were only on a half fuel load though. So that changed things. Alright, so whereabouts can I find Disneyland anyway? Okay. I think I just have to follow the next highway to the left. And we'll get there. So this one. Sort of got a different sound to it right now. Oh, why does the airspeed dial go that fa far if uh, it's got overstressed there? Well, we didn't quite make it to Disneyland, folks. Yep, now it overstressed at about 230 knots, which is what I expected. But darn it, the airspeed dial went to higher than that. I was hoping for, <laughs> hoping to get to higher speeds, but oh well. All right, I, th I think that does it for me with this plane for now. Yeah. And we'll do some more testing with it. And mainly I want to find out whether it really has this range or not. Uh, so that might be interesting. We'll try and test it on its on the critical leg across the Atlantic, which is the one from Goose Bay to Greenland. That's the longest leg that you absolutely have to do on a round-the-world flight, I think. Uh, providing that you can go from Russia to Alaska, you know, to the Aleutian Islands. That's might not be doable these days, but, uh, you know, you got the idea. So uh, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.